Good day everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at a vintage laptop that I got um, from a thrift store earlier this year. This is a Philips LTP3230 286 laptop from I believe around 1990 or 1991. And uh, this was in fairly poor condition when I first picked it up. It was covered in many years worth of grime and sticker residue and the like, but I've been able to clean it up reasonably well. But unfortunately there are a lot of scratches in it as you can see there, but it's par for the course for something that's like 26 years old. Uh, and surprisingly there's very little yellowing. There is some on the floppy drive as you can see there. And uh, the keys do have some in random places. I don't know why some are yellowed and some aren't. But on the whole it's in reasonably good condition for its age. So now we'll take a look at the ports on the back. And let's turn this around. So if on the back here we've got a little air vent and fan. Uh, when I first got this the case had been opened up at some point and hadn't been put back together correctly. So these pieces here weren't fitting together and was rubbing against the fan. I was able to fix that. And uh, underneath this slot we have the usual VGA port, 9-pin serial and a parallel port. There is a reset button in there. When I first got this that was also stuck down so the computer wouldn't start up. Uh, underneath this uh, panel here we have... I can get it open. There is a sound card in there, and that's not original to the computer. This computer has an 8-bit ISA slot underneath this removable panel here, and presumably at some point the original owners had put in an 8-bit sound blaster sound card, which still works fine. The battery, I was at, it was completely dead when I got it, obviously, for something this old. I opened up the battery casing and replaced the NICAD cells in there with the uh, modern lithium ion cells and the protection circuitry. So this will work off its battery now. Um, unfortunately, there's obviously no indication for the battery life on the computer other than a flashing LED to tell you when it's about to shut off. So now we'll open the computer up and then take a quick look at the display and keyboard and then power it on. So looking at the keyboard, we have a mechanical keyboard that uses a switch that looks very similar to the ELPS type key switches, but it does not say ELPS anywhere on there if my camera will focus. Uh, so I'm guessing they're probably a clone of the ELPS switches. They feel very similar to the ELPS black switches in that they do not have much of a bump or a key click to them. But they are mechanical key switches and not rubber dome switches, which is pretty cool for a laptop. Over here we have a, I guess like a template where you could write uh, different functions for the keys, such as in a word processor or something like that. There's one for each key on the top row. We've got the usual caps lock, num lock, scroll lock lights. Uh, hard drive light and floppy light and turbo. This is a turbo switchable um, processor. The hard drive is a 40 megabyte Connor hard drive, IDE hard drive. It's a full uh, size desktop hard drive and uh, when I got this computer the hard drive was stuck. It wouldn't start up and I actually had to physically open up the hard drive and free the heads in order to get this computer to boot up from it. But it is still working after that did that, so that's something. Uh, this switch here allows you to control the volume of the internal PC speaker. At the top there it would be muted, middle would be low, bottom would be high. So that's pretty cool, it's nice to be able to turn the, the PC speaker off as they can get rather annoying at times. Brightness control for the LCD, contrast control for the LCD. This is a monochrome uh, passive matrix LCD display, obviously. Um, so we can uh, start the computer up now if my camera will focus. It will work off the battery but I do have a cigarette lighter power adapter in my car here. Let's get that out of the 
the sun. This has been upgraded with 4 megabytes of RAM. It has uh, 30 pin SIM slots inside. MS-DOS 5.0. Try and get this out of the sun. Now this computer does have VGA graphics on board, but unfortunately one of the memory chips for the video RAM is faulty and uh, it only works correctly in text mode and CGA mode. Anything higher than that the d display becomes garbled. So I guess we can demonstrate the uh, sound card that's been added to this computer. I'll open up GLX or uh, Galaxy Music Player which is a uh, mod player, mod file player. So go into the directory. My camera will focus. And we'll run the program. Uh, fortunately the sun is shining on here so it's difficult to see. Uh, and it's being a monochrome display doesn't really help either. So obviously there's no speaker connected up to this, so in order to get sound I will use my Griffin iTrip, I'll plug that into the computer and then we should be able to hear the sound on the car radio. So I will do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've hooked up the computer to the iTrip and I've got it connected to the car radio here. So we'll choose a mod file, there's only a couple on here, uh, this one's quite good. And there the computer is playing through the car sound system. The sound quality of this old 8-bit uh, Sound Blaster card isn't the best, but it's not bad considering. If you saw uh, my previous video, I think the one I did before this, I used this computer to play the AT88 Domination demo, which uses 8 bit sound cards. And that uh, plays quite nicely on this computer. This is running off the battery at the moment, by the way, because I only have one cigarette lighter slot to plug in. So that's enough of that. Uh, we can try out the 88 Domination demo. Although I've already done a video with that, so I won't play the whole thing. Turn the volume down a bit. There's a volume uh, knob on the back of the sound card. Not focusing. As you can see, the animation doesn't play terribly well due to the fact that this is a passive matrix display, so there'll be a lot of ghosting. But the, the sound plays really well on this one. Pretty impressive with 26 year old technology. So, yeah, if you want to see the whole uh, video of that 
go look at the, the previous video I did of that. So one final thing I wanted to touch on before ending this video is this computer very nearly got used in a German TV series. My camera's not focusing as usual. Um, yeah, there, there's a local Finnish computer group that I'm a member of and somebody there was busy asking for uh, if anyone had various computers to sell him to use in um, uh, a TV series that was going to be filmed here. The series in question is uh, Deutschland 83, which I believe is actually fairly well known for a German TV series. And they're apparently going to be doing some filming here. And yeah, this guy wanted various different Finnish computers and uh, to use in the series. And one of them that he posted a picture of that he wanted to use was an NEC 486 laptop that um, Look, he said in it, the NEC 46 laptop or something similar, and the design of it was very similar to this uh, computer. So I showed him a picture of this, and he said, "Hey, would you might would you uh, use this computer?" Uh, and uh, he said, "Yeah, that was fine." But I said to him, "I wasn't planning on selling it to him." So he said, "Yeah, he could um, he could rent it or borrow it from me." So we exchanged emails about this for. A while and uh, it did seem like it was going to happen like he was going to use the thing but then he came back to me and said uh, uh, well we're gonna have to modify it and that he would probably end up having to buy the thing from me so I asked well uh, what modifications did you want to make to it and uh, so he said oh we're well, we gonna take the screen out and stick a tablet in there and so I was like yeah you're not doing that to this and so uh, that unfortunately never happened this thing never got used for that production so that's unfortunate it would have been kind of cool to have this used in a tv series but uh yeah i wasn't gonna have him take apart the screen to stick a tablet in there i did offer him i said i could program you i could write a, a custom program that could display whatever you want on the screen but you never got back to me about that so presumably the we're interested in that if just they wanted to use their tablet to display whatever it was they wanted on the screen for when they were filming. So that was kind of unfortunate. But uh, yeah, um, I know this video wasn't particularly interesting. There are a lot better uh, people at doing this sort of um, thing than I am. I'm just starting out. I would like to make better YouTube videos about finished computers and technology and all those sort of things but I'm still very new at this and still need a lot of practice so I hope you enjoy this somewhat boring and rambly video and I will see you again sometime <laughs>